So we Holm, uh, shall mainly focus uh, on the waste uh, management company and its role in the community and circular economy. Uh, so we comes from a company called Eco Fellows and from Tampere. So please, floor is yours. Well, thank you, and it's very nice to be here. I used to work for the city of Tampere, and Tampere and Tartu are twinning cities, so I used to come here every once in a while. But now I've been working for, I think, 14 years already for the company. So it's a long time, and I see a big changes in, in Tartu. It looks so fantastic. So anyways, my presentation is telling some examples of what we have done and what we we'll have in the future. So the world is in the rapid change and no matter if we like the change or not, it's happening, it's happening around us. And we find out that the old system isn't working any more, we have to change it. And we have to think it over, we have to find new solutions. We have to find the solutions for the whole picture, for the global, we have to find the global solutions, but we have only local means at local level. We have to find the new roles for the partners and who our partners are. We've been talking about public, then private, public-private partnership. We talk about third sector, citizens and the community. We have to find new business models, as we heard this morning. And somebody is losing the businesses, and some, some, somebody is gaining new businesses. The added value chains are de developed differently than they used to. And the revenue logic is totally different than it used to be. But the change is there. And some information about Tampere, so you understand maybe my, my examples a bit better way. So Tampere is about 200 kilometers north from Helsinki, and in the Tampere region, Tampere and the surrounding municipalities together, about 350,000 people. And the spended expenditure of research and development is very high, but at the same time, the unemployment rate in Tampere is the highest in the bigger cities in Finland. We have long tradition in, uh, in industry and IT technology. We have universities like you have here in Tartu and lots of young students with enthusiastic minds. And first about, uh, first about the waste management. Uh, we, in Tampere region, there is this Tampere Regional Solid Waste Management Company. It's a non-profit company and it's uh, owned by 70 municipalities together. And in Finland, these kind of a municipal owned waste management companies take care of the municipal wastes, but they work in a bit different uh, methods. In Tampere region, uh, the municipal owned non-profit company is in charge of the whole waste management chain from homes, from source separation until the end, the, what, whatever happens at the, at the uh, waste management site. But it works very closely with the citizens because all in this a circular economy starts with the waste separation and it has to happen at homes, at offices and at companies. And it works, the company, the waste management company works also very close with the private companies because new innovations are needed. It has to be uh, developed the whole time. But at this stage, it has been very successful and like the recovery rate of the waste is now about 90% in our region. And all this has been paid 
by the waste fee, no extra money has been needed for the investments or for the running costs of the waste management. And because the, I tell you some about the new examples of the new innovations, these are the innovations just for the, for the households and for the citizens for the source, source separation that I mentioned, that's the, like the key thing when we are talking about the uh, circular economy. So this waste collection, deep waste collection system have been developed maybe 10, 15 years ago already, and a new type of, of automatic waste collection systems for the citizens in the districts are already existing in Tampere, and they've been de developed together with, with the municipal-owned waste management company and with the citizens who are using these systems. And this is a picture of the, one of the waste management sites. Hopefully you can see the see the name. So they are different places for different kind of a recovery uh, activities. And now new circular economy business park is under development. All this site is owned and managed by the waste management company, but here will be about the size the same as the old waste management site is for private companies who are participating the whole uh, circular economy system in the region. And there is also another development site on the other side of the city, and there some quite big companies are cooperating with the municipalities and municipal wastes and with, with, uh, with uh, some other municipalities and the waste management company. And it's, it's running already. But when we are talking about the circular economy, we are just reaching like the first level. These examples were good and they are very going well and, and, and like I said, no extra money is needed. People are used to this system. But we are still on the outer square of this, this industrial ecology. Recycling as raw material, and some part like reuse as material. But now we are talking more about the new, new ownership models. We are talking about the sharing economy, access economy, as we heard today, very good presentations, very interesting cases. And we are talking about platform economy. Like I told you, the waste management company has provided a platform for the companies, private companies, to develop their ideas for the use of this circular economy and for the citizens and households. And we talk about bioeconomy. We have to find the business models, like service instead of product, service and product combinations, leasing models, circular design, modularity, updating, sustainability, you name it. There are so much new new, how do you say that, everywhere is coming something new that we should consider. So where should we concentrate in? And of course, IT technology is something that we have, we have to take care of at every stage because this smart technology makes us possible to reach the targets that we have. And this is a bit theoretical, and it's the, I found this picture of Granlund Consulting. And like in Tampere, we are in a built environment. So they are dividing the built environment into different phases. First, you have to choose the materials you design, you construct the, the environment, you use it, and then after, it'll be, it will be the end of life. And the circular economy has different kind of aspects, and we can benefit, but it has a, it's like a, like a, like a, 
like an object that looks different from diff when you turn it. So we can benefit when I like to carry this, this can, I take the handle and when I like to pour it, I just lean it to one end. So it looks different and we have to take care of all these aspects. But at a certain time and in certain, uh, with certain means. And now something new. This is a map of Tampere. Here is downtown if you have been there. Tampere is quite small, situated in a small piece of land between two big lakes. And here is the new district area, just about five kilometers from the downtown of Tampere. It's gray because it's all industrial site. It looks like this. There used to be a paper mill. But the city bought this land area 2014. The whole land area here and the water area. And one day, it might look something like this. There will be something like 25,000 people and 7,000 jobs. But there are many, in first, environmental challenges in this area. It's brownfield, but it ha it's brownfield. It's had a large amount, like 1.5 million cubic meters of wood fibers in the, in the lake, just close to the, to the land area. It has large number of polluted soil, a different type of polluted soils, and building materials that had to be retreated. And if, you are, if we are thinking the circular economy, everything has to be treated on the site. And there is a former sludge land filling site uh, on the area. And at the same time, later this year, the city and the surrounding municipalities which will get its drinking water from the big lake just about five, seven kilometers away from this, this brownfield area. And we have, we've been planning the idea, what we like to have in this new housing dis and, and uh, city district. We've been starting from cir circular economy, and we've been talking about the different type of energy uh, wastewater, waste management system, about mobility, about the uh, renaturing the uh, urban area, uh, how the people are going to live there, what kind of lifestyles they will have, and what are the, the businesses the area is suitable for. And we came up to the strategy for the area for 25,000 people and 7,000 businesses. The base of the pyramids are the closed-looped and industrial ecology uh, concepts that we are going to use there. They are necessary, but they are more or less something that we know already, but they have to be in use there all at the same time. And the city will provide the platform for the private companies and the universities to develop these concepts for the future, not for today, but the future, for the people and with the people. And the next level of the pyramids are the business models of the future in this area, and they have to be based on the circular economy. And again, the municipality, the city, will provide the platform for the private companies, for the citizens, to develop the business models that will be used there and developed. And on top of the pyramid are the people and the companies that are in the area one day. 
And then last part of my presentation is something about my company or our company where I'm working. It's at something concrete because this, I was telling first about the wage management, something that's going on and it's, it, it has very good results already. Then something we have had in the plants and something the Eco Fellow is, is working uh, with. And I think our role is more like to shake the mindsets of the people. I'm many times I'm referring our job like the job of the a priest and the churches. In the churches are visited by the like the white sheep, those sheep that have everything in in order. Our role is just to work with the people like the gray sheep that have some ideas that they are ready to change their lives but they don't exactly know how to do it. So our company is owned by the city, by the waste management company, and by the power utility that's owned by the city. It was founded in 2002. We have 15 employees. And the only thing we do is we promote sustainable way of living and businesses in, in the region. And our offices is situated just downtown Tampere. And here are some examples, because we like to, we are working very close to the people, with the people, and with the media to get more attention to our activities. This is just a nice picture of last uh, uh, summer during the European Green Week. Every year we organize a big event on one of the local marketplaces. Uh, the day is like a big flea market, but without any money. People bring there something they, they don't need anymore, and people are visit some people are just taking some items they need, but they don't have it. So something like four to 5,000 people visit this event every year. This is just, maybe the picture is a bit difficult to understand, but it's just like a year ago, we started new kind of a activity with the old textiles. People where are, they have their closets full of old t-shirts and jackets they don't fit anymore or look old fashioned. They have old sheets and, and towels. And also some factories have lots of, of material they don't use anymore. So we started an operation where the people can bring their old textiles and we call this place Next Style. It's the next generation textiles. All the textiles are separated, those ones that are so worn out and not so good quality, they will be changed to energy plants. And those textiles that are waiting, waiting for the time that something else will come out of them, they are stored and some textiles are sold and all the kindergarten and schools can come to to get the textiles free for, for their activities. And example B, I'm, I do a lot of any kind of handwork, so I go to buy textiles for my purposes there too. And we had the target for last year to collect 25 tons of textiles and employ something like, I, I think it was 25 people. We've been employing 50 people and the textile, we have got textiles more than 150 tons and we the new storage place and a new shop uh, will be open in downtown Tampere. And this is just another case where we try to assist the people who are looking better ways to participate the circular economy 
So in one day, we collected 7,500 old eyeglasses from people's homes. And we had a partner in Tanzania, a development agency, who took the eyeglasses, measured them, and gave to the people who, who were needing the glasses. And the media was very interested in this story. So first they, they, they write stories about three people who gave their glasses to the collection and then the afterlife of these glasses in Tanzania. They were interviewing the people there. So it's, these examples are very simple but very concrete and I think somehow they might be on the way uh, for making the change in our region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Suvi. Uh, it, it was uh, all that exciting to hear those uh, uh, initiatives, what, what you do. And uh, from the very beginning, I, I picked up uh, one figure, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but you said that you have reached 90% uh, of material recovery Recall, yeah. in your region. Th this is an astonishing number. It, it must have been very costly or there are some kind of different fins living in that area. Oh, we've been practicing already for 25 years, I think. So it's not so, it's not so rapid chase, but it's, it's been happening. Like now, like the households, if they have the bin for a bio waste, they get free bins for glass and metals. So that is one thing that makes the recovery rate so high. So almost every every house have the waste bins for for these different wastes. How do you say the the different waste like glass and bio waste and so on. Uh, I also urge you to uh, pose questions for Suvi because uh, she also uh, needs to uh, leave Tartu and uh, get on a bus. So uh, please, uh, questions. Um, you showed the model that you have developed and you said that the role of the municipality is to provide a platform. Can you tell us what you mean exactly? What is this platform and how can it be used? Well, uh, like right now, we uh, tomorrow I have a meeting in the morning, that's why I have to leave. Because I have a meeting where we are just making the plans, how we, how we ask all the, all the companies and, and associations and, and private citizens to come to develop the, like the dry toilets and the nutrient circulation in the area for the future. So we ask in an, like an, uh, in an open way, all the companies, all the universities, all the research institutes and the people to come to join. So we are trying to look the the future from different kind of perspectives, what is possible, uh, uh, what is uh, viable in the, in the means of, of, of businesses and, and so on. But the question for us sometimes is that when we have done these gatherings and people have um, shared their ideas with us, then sometimes there is this gap of realization between these different partners. And it would be interesting to hear if you have some strategies of overcoming these gaps. Or maybe you are developing them. <laughs> uh, ho hopefully. I I'm very enthusiastic, but we are just starting that. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, if you have good models, we are ready to use them and I, we are ready to cooperate. Mm -hmm. We just try to get the mm -hmm. good results for the future. Thank you. Any more questions?
I, I have uh, one notion on, on my own. Um, uh, Ecofellows is a municipally owned company. Yes. Um, so I could assume that uh, uh, the, the prime uh, goal for the Tampere regional or the local government is to uh, um, uh, boost the local economy, get more jobs, uh, uh, promote the growth. So uh, taking the, the last initiatives, what you had here with uh, uh, and the flea market, people exchanging uh, their stuff uh, uh, free of charge and then the eyeglasses. All those things actually do not contribute to the economy. So how do you, um, how do you explain, how, how do you overcome this uh, contradiction that on the one hand <clears throat> we are really uh, being uh, like told from, from the governments and local governments that we should conserve and reduce and recycle, but on the other hand, they need to keep the consuming economy going and growing. So how do you uh, so, make that balance? So from our point of view, um, the, the share we are doing or not, uh, not booming the business, it's unfortunately, it's so limited, so the municipality or the businesses haven't been very upset with the activities we've been doing so far. But I hope, because I believe that the future is there, and we have to do the change. And at the same time, these were just some examples we are doing at the, at the citizen level, but we have also the activities for the sharing economy and new businesses. And I, I'm sure they are coming and just the, how do you say, it, the old structures will fall down. We need the revolution again. Okay. Uh, very strong language, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, small present for you and a good applause. Thank you.